Hey everybody, this is Last Robokai, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Fall of Cybertron. In fact, actually, it's not just um, another episode, it's two episodes. <laughs> uh, enjoy joining me is, of course... Yo dudes, it's cool guy, and really looking forward to this one, because there was a bunch of discussion about how the Combaticons were like a really well-oiled military unit, and their banter does uh, only gets better in these, these next two episodes. Yeah, the uh, the only downside is is that these uh, these particular um, episodes are actually quite short. That's not to say they aren't really interesting, uh, especially the uh, especially the second one. Though I will say the first one does have an interesting mechanic of its own, and I really like the level design, and it doesn't stick around too long. So it's kind of it's kind of a good thing. We'll show you what you mean as we get in. So uh, might as well jump straight into uh, the very first one, Belly of the Beast. Transports guns will shred you to bits! I have no patience for your cowardice, Onslaught! Decepticons! It is time to reclaim the Energon that is rightfully ours! Attack! Attack! Idiot! Blast off, Swindle! Time to salvage this mess! We're moving into position now, Onslaught! And just like Jazz, Swindle has a grappling hook. <laughs> and just like Jazz, Swindle is ridiculously athletic. Rise mm -hmm. to the underbelly of the transport. And see if you can't find a chink in the arm. Ah! And firepower is too much. Well, Star screen would have us <laughs> Now you probably noticed that there is uh, something uh, different about what Swindle's doing. Essentially, he's got he's got two firing modes because he's a Combaticon. And one of them is a turret, and it will just fire at anything uh, if you haven't got a lot. It's a beautiful, beautiful alternate. Good idea. Take all four of them out and hurry. The detecting acid pools dead ahead. But immediately fire whatever target you select. So th yeah, this is this is what I say. This is a really interesting mission because this is a this is a rolling mission. Like this, vi you know, the transport is moving the whole time. You're moving the whole time. You've got to keep up with it. And there's like the terrain is going to change as we go along. It's like it's a really interesting level. I really quite enjoy it. I really appreciate you pimp slapping that one car. <laughs> uh, interestingly, I should also note. But those acid pools are gonna make it tricky to get to the front! Try using your grappling hook, Swindle! Right. I'll blast me some Autobots on the way! Careful, Swindle! That acid will eat you alive! You realize acid does more than just sit your paint job, right? Thanks, bro. Um... <laughs> I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Brawl <laughs> just ruined everything! Brawl! You can actually get so far ahead of this that you don't even need to go over the acid here, but uh, Robokai is going over it, it over it anyway because it's one of the cooler parts of the level, and you're kind of a terrible oh, yeah. person if you if you uh, circumvent it. You get Plus, you you kind of need to head in this direction if you want to get the audio hooks and the blueprints. Yeah, that's also a big thing. Yeah, so it's a, a dynamic rolling level. I find it, I find it really, really fun. Just, just how it, how it does that. One gate. There we go. There's our blueprint for the level. There's only one blueprint, one audio log in this particular one, and the audio log is not that much further away over here on our precarious acid pools that does more than cinch our paint job. Really off the beaten path. Slot, brawl, vortex, swindle, and blast off. Each one a formidable force in his own right. Together, talk about the whole being greater than some of its parts. When the Combaticons combine to form Bruticus, any Autobots in the vicinity are facing a whole world of hurts. <laughs> that's, that's putting it nicely. Yeah, so, oh yes, now I remember what I was going to say. The achievement for this level uh, is a little tricky, but essentially you see all the aerial bots flying around. You've got to ram one of those <laughs> in vehicle form. Yeah, best of luck with that. 
I have actually done it, but uh, it was just because one spawned at the beginning and came down to ground level and I shrammed him. That's a very luck-based thing, that's for certain. Mm -hmm. Yep, I fiddle around with that way too long and then decide, hey, let's uh, let's make the Path Blaster upgraded. Uh, didn't get to get the uh, the final one yet. Uh, we we really we really need to do that in the Riot Cannon before the end of this <laughs> let's play. Yeah, yeah, I am going to make certain Must that the done. Riot Cannon get uh, gets its uh, gets its uh, its due for sure. Mm. Oh, well, the Path Blaster is amazing as well. We got to do it. Yeah, the Path Blaster is pretty hilarious when uh, when the gambler goes off. There's really, yeah. So the aerial bots gimmick, aside from that shockwave that disabled my special ability, is they throw grenades that uh, you have to transform to shake off. They're sticky grenades, and if you transform, it just flies off, and you're fine. Also, two titans. Why? Because one was, uh, wasn't intense enough. I do love that. It's kind of it's kind of this big showdown. I'm like, okay, then I guess I'll just you know do the do the right thing and, and charge straight at them. And then sort of realize this is a terrible idea. Why am I doing this? Because it's what I would do. I, I'm just, I'm just flattered, man. You're channeling yeah. me here. Oh, look, it gives you a little bit of cover. That's a oh no, oh no, <laughs> oh dear. Mistakes were made. Regrets, Mistakes regrets were formed. Were made. I, was I haven't even like activated any of like done enough damage so they'll bring out their healing things yet either. I'm too like running from them. There we go. Hey, you got one. Like swindle. Swindle cleans up these guys pretty easily, actually, because the the rockets do such a spread of damage. The minute he pops out his healing drones, the Titans just lost him. The rockets actually do the most uh, the most overall damage per second of um, any of the of the vehicle weapons out there, aside from possibly the uh, the molecular bomb that um, Vortex had. <laughs> They, they just do a ton of damage, and you can fire them so quickly. And that, that's pretty much all she wrote. Got rid of that guy. Solve that problem. Yep, and now all that en energon... Um... Because it couldn't possibly <laughs> be that easy. <laughs> well, it, you know, there are Transformers, of course, they would have to have an old vehicle mode on it. Energon Transport. Oh, dear. And that's... Fucking dead. That's, that's it. That's the level. Short and sweet. The rolling level gimmick doesn't uh, overstay its welcome. Mm -hmm. um, it's really quite fun. It's just quite an enjoyable short level. I would say that, uh, I, f I feel, I feel like though, like it just being that section, like I feel like they could have just smushed these next two together and don't call them like individual episodes, but I guess they had a specific number they wanted to do and they wanted this one to stand by itself. I guess so. I mean, on the other, on the other hand, it is sort of nice simply because, um, this game does not have multiple checkpoints per level the way that War for Cybertron did. So by splitting them up, it gets, it gets you much closer to the unadulterated smackdown that is our next episode, uh, that is our next chapter, Combaticons Combined. Yep, and we're rolling into that straight away because, well, this one's not a very long one either. And so we're gonna, just, let's just get straight into it. Darn right. Hey, so let's talk a little bit about Swindle now. Uh, Swindle, Swindle is uh, the literal worst uh, in, in terms of like mor morality uh, uh, transform in the entire series. He's the guy that is like his entire thing is he's a black market kind of guy. He really likes making like dosh. He he really likes cash, and he also doesn't actually care um, who he negotiates with. Autobot, Decepticon, really, really <laughs> doesn't matter. And what he's selling also really doesn't matter. Yeah, he does He, he does particularly enjoy selling weapons, though. 
Um, and so when we talk about, when we talk to, like the episode 6 about the various reasons why in Generation 1 the Transformers, the Combaticons might have ended up being in prison. Uh, Swindle is pretty much because he was just selling like weapons he probably shouldn't have been to everybody. And <laughs> he ends up going and doing that uh, a lot <laughs> in, uh, in subsequent episodes for the Generation 1 as well, including, uh, including an incident where all the other Combaticons were incapacitated after a fight and he sold them. All of them. He, so he sold them all to various nations as weapons, and Megatron was like, well, I've got this giant cannon I need Bruticus to hold, and Swindle's like, oh, wow, uh, funny story about that, Megatron, you see, uh, uh, oh, shit. Yeah, so, um, so Megatron basically put a bomb in his head <laughs> that would go off if he didn't get all the fucking Combaticons back. <laughs> his swin uh, swindles. Oh, hey, audio one. You sound as if I felt more vulnerable on a mission. I think my fellow Autobots feel the same. Here we are, wheeling a slow-moving slug of a transport loaded with highly unstable, incredibly explosive energon through heavily contested territory in broad daylight. Oh, and did I forget to mention that if we do encounter Decepticon resistance and this powder keg blows, it won't just be our metallic hides that burn up in the inferno, but the entire future of every Autobot. No pressure, by the way. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Question! The transport can fly! Why did it just do that to begin with? Probably takes a lot of energy to float that hunk of junk. Really? Because if you calculate its total mass and... Focus! Yeah, stop! Oh, here we go. The mission is lost! Abort! 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 You've got to be kidding, Starscream! It's only a matter of time before we disable the transport! So by my count, it took 10 minutes from start to finish for, uh, for uh, Starscream to declare a full retreat. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that actually that's actually a pretty good record. He uh, he held out a lot longer than normal. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that um, I'm pretty sure that in war when they were uh, when they were attacking Iacon, it was um, it was like 12 minutes from Megatron going off the grid to uh, to Starscream ordering the full uh, the full retreat there. So I mean. I don't know, you might call it about average, but at that point that was that was like the major assault on Kai and Kai. Leaving uh, leaving there was just ugh. I don't even want to think about that. Swindle, did you get the first anti-air cannon yet? Uh yeah. As soon as I figure it out. I think the funniest part about um about Swindle's conversation with Megatron that resulted in the bombing is that he was trying to say, look, I can't help it, it's part of my programming to make money. And um, Megatron was just like, okay, then I'm going to override your programming to something more powerful. First gun offline! Self-preservation. There's two of them, genius! Head around the back to hit the other one! Never that simple. I can't figure ears. out for the life of me who's the bigger idiot. Rocket who came up with a design that exposes live ammunition rounds on the exterior of the cannon batteries. Or me, for agreeing to stand out here and load the things. What's got two thumbs and no apparent capacity for intelligence? I love that audio log. That, that, auto, that Autobot no, knows what's up. He's like, why am I doing this? I'm a freaking idiot. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> Such is life. I can just see some Autobot move going at this guy. <laughs> like, making the motion. Oh, fuck. There is a uh, there is also something I really like about this level that you all probably noticed. When you destroy someone and their body actually will leave the ground, uh, if if their body actually can leave the ground when they die, they will just go flying off. Um, because this ship is moving, this transport vehicle is flying and moving. So like it's just an attention to detail that is so excellent. Like they don't just all drop to the floor. Like if a guy is on the ground when he dies and he doesn't his body doesn't leave the ground at all, he'll stay there. But uh, you know if if you Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for off. that demonstration, <laughs> blast off. Stop messing around, Swindle, and use your booster. Perimeter recon report. Base, this is recon 11 Alpha. We're all quiet on the western front out here. 
No hostile dotting these clear blue skies. Ow! Ah! What the? Ah! I just passed in front of a vent and took a ten-foot exhaust flame right in my unmentionable. <laughs> the audio logs at this level are fantastic. So two really fun things there. First of all, Autobots are apparently able to able to quote World War One novels, and two Transformers have unmentionables. Oh, <laughs> Yo, pretty much. I don't I don't know what classes of unmentionable. Also, like you think the fire would be a problem, but it doesn't hurt you at all when you grapple through it. I don't know. He's just been sitting there yelling at everybody. Try that. Already on our way. Shield controls look fried. We need another way to break through. Any ideas? Jump on the dropship and man the cannon. See the shield going up to that. Now that's I've died fighting so many times in this area, like shotgunners and everything else. Like the sheer amount of fire they threw at you, even on normal. Even with this amount of health, is still so dangerous. Oh yeah, and I mean, God help you if you decide to run out into the middle. Mm, yeah, that's a bad idea. Oh, I've learned that the hard way. God. And this this part ain't easy either. You can move the dropship left and right, uh, which is exactly what you do the exact moment you get in there. <laughs> because it doesn't give you even a second before it starts opening up on you. And you're not just being shot by the AA guns that slowly like turn and strafe and everything. There are a lot of dudes with rockets out on the fringes there. And sure you can turn to target them, but I believe they get replaced. Or super grenades just the hover in space. Yeah, you can probably do, see the flames coming off the train. And even point. worse, everybody that you leave alive when uh, when you jump on there, yeah, still a problem when you jump on the turret. We need to take control of this ship. Combaticons, combine into Bruticus! I'm using the old school Bruticus skin as well because nothing like mismatched bad looking camo. <laughs> so Bruticus has got a ridiculous arsenal. Uh, he's got a flamethrower as you can see that honestly is not nearly as much fun as the rest of it but if you like toasting Autobots that's cool. He's got the Sonic Pain Wave Attack which is basically just a shock wave attack that extends outwards in front of you. Also he named use, uh, for one of, uh, one of Megatron's uh, powers in Generation 1. Mm -hmm. We've also got the uh, well, Vortex can be a shield and you can bash with him. And it, like the bodies just go sailing, it's fantastic. Um, and then of course you've uh, you've got your punch, you can just punch stuff, which is always nice. And and on top of that, you've got little impact zones around your feet, so you can just crush Autobots as you walk. Rudicus is so fucking fantastic. Oh man, uh, this is this this section only lasts a couple of minutes, but it is the, one of the greatest few minutes that I've ever had in gaming. It is just that they, when I saw Bruticus was uh, in like the promo videos was going to be in this, I was like, this is going to be fantastic. Because Bruticus is my favorite combiner. I love the Combaticons. I love how they're like all just, you know, complete jerk holes uh, in a way. <laughs> punching jeeps, good lord. They, they, these guys are really difficult to punch though, unless they sort of stand still for you. They can be really annoying. It's like, dang it. They'll move, move to different places. solves everything. Well, I think the Sonic Pain Wave homes in. I wasn't like I, that should it. I'm not like, sure I if it I does or not. The point, the, the the impact zone is so huge that it probably doesn't matter. This is too easy. There we go. Gave him a good popping. Ah, oh dear. Uh, just you know, we're just we're walking across the top of a giant transport, and it's just like a short jaunt for us. Okay, now what do you think that thing in front of us looks a little like? Little, little bit like a football court, a uh, football post. Yeah. No, oh, um, that's, funnily enough, the achievement for this level is scoring a, a goal. Or you guys call it. <laughs> you put an Autobot between those uprights, you got yourselves an achievement. There's another one over on the other side in case you run out uh, from test hits on the other one. Nope, it's just in my way. This is, uh, this is something that's, that uh, can't possibly go wrong, destroying a giant turbine on a flying machine full of highly explosive energy on. Uh, yeah, there is no way we're not thinking this through properly. 
well, like as as came up in the thread, combiners do get uh, quite a bit of uh, an attention deficit uh, when they get together. Boom! Oh my god, that entire wing just evaporated. Uh, it feels good. Yeah, see, like I'll be aiming in one direction, and the Sonic Pain Wave will seek somebody else out. It's kind of weird. Seeing if there was anybody else left to shoot before I went off. <laughs> yes, Bruno, guess it probably was a terrible idea. Control room is just ahead. Get those flaps lowered so we can fire. So here's the thing, as well. We've got flaps. Uh, you can, you know, you can pop them up by just destroying the little red things that you see on them, as I'll demonstrate now, to protect yourself from the cannons. You Bruticus! Really? <laughs> you don't need it! You've got, a, you've got a helicopter that deflects rockets, who gives a fuck? Yeah, I was just like, if you do that, you are missing the point of Bruticus. Yeah, but... It's like, I'm, pretty, I'm not sure if I, my stepping on the Autobots killed them or the rocket's explosions killed them, but there you go. that you screwed up from the get-go! No one addresses the leader of the Decepticons in such a manner. Arrest them! The most fantastic thing about that cutscene is, um... The pose at from, the end? Well, aside from, aside from how awesome the Combaticons just completely clean house in that, uh... In the cockpit there, like it's just as onslaught walks along, like with just with, with absolute uh, brutal efficiency, they just clean through it. But my favorite part is when Starscream says the the Combaticons and just sort of waves his hand dismissively, like it's just like you know, like eh, you know, like that this, I'm supposed to be oppressed by this. I think not. <laughs> I always really like the. Di I mean, I love how it pulls home the dynamic of how well oiled the Combaticons are. Where, uh, where Onslaught gives an order, Blastoff and Vortex get, uh, get in the, uh, the cockpit seats. And they're just like, this is the best we can do. Onslaught's like, I know you can do it, buddies. <laughs> then manage it. Okay! Yeah, they're quite, very quite different to their Generation 1 incarnations. But at the same time, like that, like I said in like the, uh, the previous video, you get the sense that they are a, a well-drilled machine. And you would normally see an operation like this being performed in a game or in a film or something. By the good guys, and I just love, I just love that that reversal of the situation. They everybody desperately needs this, so they're pulling off crazy operations with like you know dangerous maneuvers and losing half of what was possibly some of the last energon on the planet is still pretty huge and a pretty bad outcome. Um, I mean, still having the energon is a good outcome, but you know, a Starscream kind of technically got a right to be pissed, even though it is all his fault because. <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> you know, like it, and and it's quite it's quite nice to just to just see that uh, you screwed it up from the get go. It's just the very beginning. It's like, hey, we probably shouldn't do this, and Starscream is just like, let's do it. And then four minutes later, oh god, we're getting destroyed. And then like what, <laughs> six minutes after that, retreat. <laughs> 
He's just... Oh dear. Well, Starscream's had a nice ride as the leader of the Decepticon, but all good things must come to an end. We know from the very first episode that Megatron comes back and... <laughs> the next, uh, next episode, um... Well, cool guy, you get to sit back in the hot seat of one of your favorite characters. You may be hearing me crack my knuckles right now, because oh my god, I'm in love with this, with these next two chapters. The next, uh, the next one will also be a twofer, because um, uh, Megatron Returns is also very short. But, um, yeah, I, I love these next two chapters. And the, there is a certain, like, essence of Megatron, and it just captures it perfectly. I'm, I'm really 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 looking forward to showing it off oh yeah and uh you know you thought uh, scream was handy before it's we're, <laughs> we're cranking we're cranking it up to 11 for the next episode which with what may well be the the, the biggest love letter to the transformer series in the very next episode so until then i'm the last robot guy and i've been cool guy see you all next time <laughs>